Hello and welcome to the Soul Fire Inspiration Podcast. My name is Webby. I'm glad that you're here listening because it is my privilege to be able to encourage and inspire you to live intentionally through music and conversation. This is the conversation part of things. To be able to access the music, well, you're welcome to search for Webby on the various digital streaming and downloading platforms that are available to you. I promise you, you're going to love the music you find on there. That's for sure. But coming back to why we're here and what I'm going to be sharing on this episode, um, let me first say that this month of August of 2020, um, I haven't really been sharing from an overarching topic as is usually the custom because this month has just really been about putting together encouraging messages and sharing them on the week-by-week basis. And so the thought that I wanted to share with you today is drawn out of a question that I'd like to ask you, um, the answer to which you probably already have. And if not, you're welcome to pause this, think about it, then click play and continue listening through with it in the back burner. And the question is this, what do you need right now? It's a very interesting question. What do you need right now? Now listen, if you're like me and you already have your answer, that answer is probably money. You need money. First of all, have you considered the times that we're living in? I mean, yeah, right now, money is the one thing that we need most because, well, resources or the, the, the inflow of resources has kind of either been hampered or reduced or taken away altogether. Depending on your circumstance, you're probably most in deficit of financial resources and that's completely understandable but i'd like to kind of throw a spanner into the works um, that will probably help us or force us because i think i'm in this process too um, force us to look at that answer through a different lens but before i do that let me read a scripture that is the foundation of this reflection and it's out of philippians chapter 4 verse 19 and I'm reading out of the NIV version, and it says this, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And I'd really like you to take note of the words in this scripture. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Every time I've read this scripture, I've kind of held it up against my need for financial resources to meet um, a situation that I don't have the financial resources for. And, you know, even when I've prayed and I've probably prayed along this scripture, the thought in my mind has usually been about the amount of money I need, whether that's to pay off a debt or to pay for a recording project because I am an artist and I mean, you definitely need money to record. Or if in your case, perhaps if it's you need startup capital, you need money to be able to start this business or to invest in an idea that you have or to make an investment of some kind. You know, in my case, for instance, and you probably relate to this because every single one of us has probably prayed this prayer at one point or another because this is the one thing that we've been most aware of as our biggest deficit. Every time we've prayed this prayer, it's I need money for fill in the blank. But this scripture doesn't just kind of talk about money. It actually, it, it's actually a definition of the the riches or the, the the breadth of God's resources and the needs that He's able to meet. And the classification there is all, all your needs. Now listen, there are things that can't be argued with. You know, we do need financial resources to be able to afford living in this transactional world, but. More often than not, you don't only have one need. And God is basically saying through this scripture or this text, the text in this scripture and the revelation behind the text in this scripture is showing us that there are more needs than the one you probably focus on more or most. And God wants to meet every single one of those needs. The thought that I really just wanted us to reflect around is that. Could it be that sometimes the thing you think you need the most isn't actually the thing you need the most, but there is something else that if it got sorted out or if it was put in perspective and it was um, approached in the right way, when I say the right way, I mean there was 
a response that helped to set everything else that it is connected to in place, then whatever it is that actually does need to be in place would then be in place. Let me give you an example. There are times when you, you know, remember we said that it's probable that um, the response to the question of what do you need right now, the answer to that would be money. Could it be that maybe you find yourself in a situation where what you actually need more of is peace? So you think you need money to be able to meet a need, to be able to do something, to be able to sort out a problem or to be able to take a step towards whatever it is you want to accomplish. But if you sat still for a minute and just thought about what you're thinking about or you thought about what you're feeling or you thought about what you're um, considering or the elements in your present environment, whatever your environment is, you find that the thing that is really throbbing more or is that, that stands out, I think, maybe to put it simply, is that you're very, very anxious. You're worried. You're worried sick about things that are very valid, you know. And in that moment, yes, even if you were given the money, it might give you some sense of relief. If you were able to come into the resources, the financial resources that you need to meet the challenge that you're facing, you would feel a sense of relief because now you feel that you're able to take a step forward in the direction that you want to go. But there is still that aspect of the fact that you need peace. You need the kind of peace that is not affected by whether or not you have financial resources. Because the fact is, money comes and goes. It shouldn't be the determining factor of whether or not you have peace. Could it be that in that moment, the first need that actually, need, that actually <laughs> should be met is the need for peace? Because then when you have peace, God's peace, I mean, not the kind of peace that comes only when certain things, whatever they may be to you, are right, you know, or when certain boxes have been ticked. Not the kind of peace that is determined by external factors. When you have this peace, then you're able to have a much clearer perspective of what's most important, you know. I remember a time in my life when I felt this way. I needed money to be able to take care of expenses that seemed to be tumbling out of control and my income was tumbling downwards out of control and I felt that the biggest need, the biggest thing that needed to get sorted out in that moment is to plug the leak, to bridge the gap, you know, sort out the deficit and everything would be all right in the world. But at the point at which I came to the realization that my anxiety was affecting me more than my deficit, I began to see things a little bit differently. I began to appreciate even the things that were working, that were good in my life at that moment. And I was able to experience the kind of peace that led me to be able to confidently say, God, I trust you to meet this need. God, I trust you to provide for this because I realize even in this moment, even when I have my peace, I'm not able to solve this thing. I've tried everything. I've done everything that I can do in this moment, everything that I know to do, but it is, it's just not enough. And so I even realized that even before the money comes in, of course, my first need was for peace, but my other need was to acknowledge that I, I didn't know enough and that I couldn't do enough to solve my financial problem at that point. And I needed God's help to either send the help I need in form of wisdom, either somebody to help me think through what it was that I needed to do or what I needed to adjust, or per perhaps maybe just to reorganize my priorities. Some of, the, some of the things that appear to be really, really big problems or that we magnify as really big problems are perhaps just things that we're looking at out of focus. And perhaps that's a reflection for another day. But I'd like to stay on the thought that what you really need may not always be what you think you need first. I don't mean to confuse you, but I actually want you to think about that for a second because it could be that when you have things in the proper perspective, then perhaps you might actually, you might actually stumble on the solution that you so desperately need but is right under your nose. You know, um, could it be that maybe in that moment what you need more than perhaps the money you say you need or the deficit you're dealing with is um, contentment? 
you know let, let me give you a practical example i for one i'm an iphone enthusiast i love iphones and um you know if a new iphone comes out of course it makes sense i want the new iphone you know there's a lot more functionality that i think i could benefit from but if i'm being perfectly honest in that moment and i ask myself what it is that i really think a new iphone will do that the current one i have can't do i can't really answer that question so then it becomes a question of wants versus needs all right do i really need a new iphone or do i just actually want a new iphone and does that speak into the fact that i just don't know how to be okay with what i have because um there's a contentment issue there to kind of think through perhaps what i actually need is to learn to be content because when i'm content then i'm able to be grateful and to appreciate the good that already exists and i'm not just living for the next thrill the next acquisition the next adventure you know sometimes the real adventure is the one you're having right now not the one you're aspiring to you'd have to see how that works in your context sometimes what you need is a better understanding of yourself you know um, a better understanding of your purpose you know for example you know if you sat down and thought about why is it that you feel the things you feel or why is it that you react the way you do why is it that you prioritize the way you do you might realize that perhaps if you shifted things around um, and looked at them a little differently um, in a realistic way maybe let me put it that way for the sake of this dis uh, discussion <laughs> you know what you think you need may actually be something you can even live without it's not an actual need it was just perhaps a preference you know could it be that in this moment what you need more is to just be healthy and to feel good in your own skin to be at peace in your body <laughs> you know to 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 have um to have a feeling of refreshment come over you perhaps you're just really tired and you just need to be able to get some rest it, it's it's amazing how much we overlook the power and the difference that rest makes sometimes you think you just need to jump into the next idea and start something up when really what you need for the sake of clarity is rest so that you're able to process everything that you've just been in you know your experiences through what you've just come out of or what you've been involved in or what you've been building or what you've been working on and so on and so forth rest always helps us to reset and start from a place of refreshment from a place of clarity from a place of strength perhaps even from a place of uh, understanding because then some things begin to make sense because you've had the chance to process and so bringing this back to the scripture one of the things that we we must come to agreement with is that we don't always know what we need we don't always understand even why we respond or react or um, prioritize the things that we do the way that we do but god does and this scripture that i just read philippians chapter 4 verse 19 is an assurance that god understands the intricacies that we come with because he's the one who made us he understands our needs way better than we do and his promise is that he will meet those needs according to the way he's able and he's able to do anything where our limitations end his possibilities begin and i want my needs to be met by a god like that because it means that i can always depend and trust in the fact that i can always depend on and trust in the fact that every need i have will be met the way that it the, the way that it's supposed to be met sometimes even when i pray um, and you've probably done this too if you have then i guess this is an adjustment opportunity sometimes you pray for something a big thing you ask let's say again let me go back to money because it's the easiest reference at this point you pray and ask for a certain amount of money because you've done a total of what you need for whatever it is you need it for but you don't actually need the whole amount you just need enough for the moment you're in you just need enough for the step you need to take sometimes it's you need to take the step and then the provision if it's money that that would be necessary at that point the money will come in whatever way that god will choose to send it and in fact speaking of which could it also be that what you need is a fresh pair of eyes it could be that you're praying for something and that god has already answered that prayer but he didn't send the answer to that prayer in the way you expected maybe you needed or you prayed and expected that god would send money but god sent 
the answer in the form of somebody who could either contribute in a different way that was not monetary, that would be ultimately of more value than any amount of money you could have in your hands in that moment, in lieu of the contribution that this person who has now come into your life at this moment could make. Sometimes really what you need is a sounding board, you know? And God answers prayers in the way that he meet, the way that he has understood or the way that he knows the need that we have and is choosing to meet that specific need. Sometimes you're praying about A, but the need that God is meeting is B. It's becoming, it's becoming clear to me that in this moment, with this understanding, with this revelation, that I don't just need to be in a position of praying for needs to be met, but I need to complement that with the ability to see the kind of answer that is sent in response to the prayer that I've prayed. It doesn't always look like what I expect. It doesn't always come in the way that I expect, but it is definitely always what I need in that moment and will help me get through what I couldn't have gotten through on my own strength. And I find that this is such a powerful, powerful thing to know and to understand because it completely shifts perspective, it completely shifts even just your understanding of what needs really are. Sometimes what we call needs are really just wants. Like I've said when I was, you know, referencing the example of when a new iPhone comes and you just want the new iPhone, you know. Um, I mean, it's not bad to always want the newest, shiniest gadget that in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It just means, you know, we have the ability to aspire to something and there's nothing wrong with aspiration. But is it really aspiration or a contentment problem? That's something to think about as well. But going back again, I just wanted, I actually want to bring this to a close by reminding you and, and reminding myself, I guess, as I speak to you that God knows more about your needs, my needs, than you or I do. He doesn't just stop at financial needs or meeting the meeting of financial needs, but he meets all the needs, the ones that even the ones that we don't even know we have. He meets those and he meets them in a way that allows us to be able to grow progressively through the stages of development that we so often find ourselves in through the adventure of life. So once again, think about this question. Think about the things that I've said. Of course, you're welcome to listen to this podcast one more time. What do you really need? Could it be that with everything that I've said, for you, the answer is you just need to go get some sleep? <laughs> well, I hope that this makes sense to you and that you're able to find the practical application within your context. And I also definitely hope that this has been of some encouragement to you. I look forward to the next episode. Uh, but until then, I cannot say this enough. Please do everything you can to be safe. But more importantly, be love. I'll catch you on the next one. Do take care.